Hey, hey, sup, MT watchers, how you all doing? Okay, this is the minigun that we've just made, obviously in parts 1 through 6, or 7, or whatever the hell it is. Now, what I've done is, uh, you've probably watched other MT sets before in the past anyway, I've just gone and I've selected a few of these parts. Okay, and what I've done is just applied simple different texture maps. Well, not texture maps, just simple basic materials to them. For example, this part here is red, this part here is grey, these parts here are white. You know, it's... that's it, really. Um, probably what might be a good idea is to tessellate the model a little bit and perhaps smooth it down a little bit. Um, let's have a look and see how that's going to work out for us. So, tessellate. Okay. Now, one of the problems we've got here is these bits, you see, because obviously they ain't you know, working out too nice at the moment. What we could do with, really, is optimizing the model. Not optimizing it in a way that's going to, uh, you know, bring it down to like 10 polygons or anything. But if we use Pro Optimize, which is here, okay, and then just Mash Calculate, it'll work things out fairly fast, as you can see. And um, we get to keep our polygon count rather than get rid of it. Then I can convert to edible poly. And now, rather than tessellating it to try and generate our geometry, we don't need to. Our geometry is already generated. Um, we can't mesh smooth still. If I mash meth smooth, there's a good chance Max will just die on me. See, so it'll make this kind of slightly melted looking minigun. However, at least now, you know, we've got proper surfaces on this and it's actually going to work out for us. We can do the same sort of thing over here if we need to, but we don't really need to. This is just stuff that we have to do, though, before we pass it through to go into um, Keyshot, for example, for rendering, or whatever else it is we're going to use for rendering, for that matter. Now, don't get me wrong, we can use architectural materials on this. Um, we can render it out using just a simple three-point lighting solution, and it's going to look okay. I mean, there you go, you see, it's not a bad-looking little piece, is it? And you can be quite pleased with this. Now, remember I said that this isn't really going to work for us for games wasn't necessarily true okay it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to map for games don't get me wrong however there isn't any reason really why you can't use it for games bearing in mind that you know for a uh, next gen weapon we're looking at around about 5,000 polys tops okay well let's see what we can do with that maybe throw on a pro optimize I think what I should do is probably make a copy of this before I continue because you know how things get damaged sometimes. There we go. Pro Optimize is an absolute cake to use. People don't use it enough, in my opinion. And I mean, you know, even just for sealing up my model there, which is exactly what I did. Incidentally, if you notice, there's a hole over here. Really need to finish by fixing up that hole. You can't have a hole in a mesh. Just cut there. I'll do the same thing here. Like I say, we can't have a hole in our mesh. It'll still convert across over into, um, what do you call it, into Keyshot, but that's not the point. Anyway, let's have a look at this and see what we can do with it game-wise. So, let's go Pro-Optimize. There we go, and Calculate. It doesn't take long. Now then, at the minute, we have a 100% vertex count with 21,000 faces. So if we take this down to about 20%, there we go. I mean, we're going to lose our screw definition and stuff, don't get me wrong. I think maybe about 17%. There we go. Let's see how that's looking so far. Convert that to edible poly. Okay, so that's a low poly gun job going on here. Probably do with relaxing it a little bit in places. So, let's see. I mean, we could probably take out all those bolts as well. Don't relax it too much. Come on. It's going to go circular. Relax the mesh just a little bit. There we go. Okay. And remove the parts that are just completely gone off the map.
and maybe just bring these barrels down as well. So at the minute we've got 1300 faces, well 13,000 faces. Let's bring it down to 10% vertex count. Look at that, you can't even tell the blooming difference. Well, you can at these little plates up here, but that's about it. I mean, the ends still work and everything. And you know what? Oh, you can normal map one onto the other. Well, that'd be useful. Convert to edible poly. Although, to be honest, you know, these little cylinders here. Really going to have to dismantle the entire thing before you start normal mapping it. Otherwise, you're going to get some nasty little artifacts in the middle. But as you can see from a distance, the two damn miniguns look identical, to be quite honest. But the one on the right looks somewhat shinier, which is kind of peculiar. So go figure. I mean, you can bring this down to under 10,000 polygons. Okay, anyway. Enough of that. Back into here again. And let's just quickly look over some of the uh, rendering options we can do with this. So I'm going to render this out in... Sign Renderer. Metal Ray. Indirect illumination and final gather on, and all that awesome stuff. Let's just stick a couple of lights in this, just to make a quick beauty pass. Using the method that uh, was handed to us by our own Fluxity. Bless his little pretty socks. Uh, just use target lights. Uh, we don't like to change this now, no. Simple three-point line solution. This one to about here. Bring these up a little. And have that one come down and be slightly behind. There we are. Okay, and if I turn on my light lister. Okay, I can now turn all my shadows on. And I can change my intensity on each of these. As you see, to ridiculously over the top. Like that. And now we should have this completely invisible gun, which is odd. Change my environment. As you see, you start to pick out details. Going to have to bring the gamma up and bring these up a bit more. Maybe bring this one up to about 500,000 against this being 250,000 and this being maybe 275,000 on the intensity. And as you see, details are starting to come in, sort of. Okay, well... Hmm. and so on. I mean, this is kind of one of the things that is always fun, kind of tweaking and messing around with your render settings to try and get a good solution. Uh, hang on, let's go to our customized preferences and check our gamma. There it is. So obviously we can, infect, uh, we can enable gamma correction if we want to. But if you just uh, quickly <laughs> just click OK here, so now you can see it's correcting our gamma for us as we go along, and we've got shadows being generated here. Um, how accurate are these shadows? Let's move in and have a good look at them. Yeah, that's not bad actually. It's picking up the shadows quite nicely there. It's a little bit washed out and in bloom, but uh, we're starting to kind of get what we need to do a fairly nice render here. I'm going to turn the back down a bit. And maybe this one down to four. Let me take this one down to about 700. And then mash the F9 button. Yeah, that's slightly better, you see. It's starting to kind of pick it up around the edges and so on. So, I mean, this is how we're starting to kind of try and make a render for this in this one. Let's just... Uh, 
adjust this one's path, just bring it across here. It. This should make it a little more highlighted. See how that comes out. There, yeah, that's that's much better. So we're getting some light coming in off the front, which is kind of picking out the details nicely. Like so. So if I just make this a slightly larger render, so I've got a common and maybe, I don't know, let's make it 1200 by 900, and click render. This will show you off the uh, nice image that we've just been working on. I mean, give it a minute to render, but it won't take particularly long, even on my machine, which is not especially well. And whilst I, you know, obviously don't have a lot of very complicated materials going down at the moment, if I just save this off as a workbench, if we were to just, uh, no, then let's see. Just uh, open my material editor, and I'm just using the compact at the moment. And just go over here to our arch and design, and pick perhaps a metal. Got plenty of metals down here, so we've got a nice brushed metal, which always does quite well for a gun metal alike. Now I'm going to go in and change the actual uh, diffuse color on this, make it much darker, and then the reflection color here. Well, this looks like a noise map to me, so let's just mess with these a bit. Like that. Um, what else have we got in here? Well, the glossiness seems okay. We've got some quite wide highlights there. So we could probably drop down the anisotropy a bit. So make it perhaps 0 0.5, not rather 0 0.05. Not going to change the rotation. A little bit more, not too much. There we go. And just click and drag, obviously, to apply that. And then render. This will take slightly longer because there's slightly more going on in the scene now. You can see the gun metal starting to uh, render. Obviously, it's not especially dark, and you can see the kind of patching from the noise there because we're going to need to work this map a little bit more just move that over there obviously to just darken it down now the barrel isn't mapped and it's going to want to try and map these so let's just select these come down here and UVW map it oh, I forgot it's because I've got two up months here Hold on. So an unwrap UVW map here we are um, we'll make a cylinder, and then we'll do the same over here. Okay, now if we render, we won't get the UVW errors anymore. And you can see how it's starting to apply this kind of gun metal that we can now start to work on darkening and so on. Although obviously it's going to take quite a bit of tweaking. Okay, so. You know, we've got some renders here, we're going to, be able to post them up and show people and be quite pleased with them. But uh, let's work on making some fast, really pretty renders. And for this, we're going to go over to our old friends at Keyshot.com and use the Keyshot 2 renderer. So, I'll sh see you in the next part.